Greetings, uh, dear friends all uh, over the globe, and I want to welcome you into our program again, The Starting Point. I'm so glad uh, for, for your life, and I'm so glad that we are able to connect. May the Lord bless you this, uh, this moment of time when we're going to be sharing again and encouraging one another so we can grow together. May the Lord bless you as we, uh, as we continue on this day uh, just to be able to learn more about our relationship with our Father. Um, today I want to really make some uh, big emphasis on the fact that you need to seek Him, you need to know Him. I mean, like, um, even to just understand yourself, and I think I'm going to dwell a little bit about understanding yourself and the purpose of your life, the purpose of your life on earth, and why you live, so that you probably are not going to be struggling in terms of just, uh, you know, knowing, uh, in terms of understanding where you're supposed to be going and what you're supposed to be doing, because that's now a dilemma to most people around the globe, where... Uh, we see a lot of confusion, we see a lot of gambling, we see a lot of, you know, trying to do things that we're not, we're not even meant to do. You know, it's like, um, I was sort of thinking about uh, when we look at a person who invented a bicycle, I believe a person sat down and walked through why a bicycle and what should it look like and what is the reason and the purpose of a bicycle. And that means when somebody created a bicycle, it wasn't meant to be a boat or something that is supposed to be going on the sea so you can actually go and surf on the sea. The bicycle was meant to be ridden on, you know, somebody's supposed to ride it on the road, on a good surface, and it's supposed to be a form of mobility, you know. And the boat was created because it can actually float on the sea or on the lake or on the river you know that everything was created and it, it, what is amazing is the fact that you know man creates things for a reason you create a computer for a reason you create a camera like this for a reason you create you know a bicycle for a reason and even you know it's like god has created different things for different purposes and i look at animals the way they express themselves you look at birds you know, like a duck. It's you not know, a duck will probably be good at swimming, but not a chicken, you know. And I was, you know, it's like when you send a chicken on a river or in a pool of water, you probably are just sentencing it to death. It's going to die. Why? Because it cannot swim. I mean, it wasn't created for that purpose. It wasn't created to go on the waters, but a duck was meant to do that. So everything was made for a reason and we do that. Now what's amazing is we do things for a reason and then like we define its way of direction. But you see, we don't think about ourselves being God's creation. You are God's creation. And remember you're born an individual. Meaning that you have created for a reason and you know for a certain set of direction. You're certain you're, you're kind of patterned and created for a certain direction in your life, which you probably need to understand. Just the way you understand, you try to create something, you create a bicycle because you want to ride a bicycle to you know to use it for mobility, you know, it's like to move around and you create a car. For a reason, because then you can drive and get around, you want it faster, so you create it in a way that it can actually be faster. So now God has created you and me for a reason. And everybody, everybody, and I can assure you, everybody, it doesn't matter whether you're born twins, you'll have independent minds, you'll have different interests in your life, your personalities will probably be different. Even when, you know, we have conditions of a Siamese tree, a Siamese uh, twins who are born maybe sharing a body. But I tell you what, they have two heads, they share one body, but they have totally independent interests. Different personalities, they behave differently. And one might desire to be a doctor, and one might desire to be a lawyer. It's like, how can that be? They share one body. You know what? What God has created, the way He has created your mind is so independent. The way He has created your heart is so independent that you will definitely, doesn't matter whether you're born twins, you have individual, individual personalities and interests. So, when God created man, all from the beginning, I want to tell you one of the reasons why we should actually trust and believe that God needs to be involved in your life and you need to be looking for a reason 
why you live, why you are on earth. Because the decision, as I've always said, the decision for you to be to exist is not yours. It was not yours. It was God's decision. So if you make the decision, it's just like the person who manufactured a car or somebody who manufactured a bicycle. It was an independent decision. They came up with an idea. They came up with a vision. The same way God did. And you see, in, uh, in Jeremiah, we read in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, God talks to Jeremiah. And now I want to tell you that he talks to Jeremiah as a person who created Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is trying to question him and telling him and giving excuses that he's so young, he cannot do what God is telling him to do. And God tells him that, that before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I create, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet of the nations. Now, God saw the end of Jeremiah before he was born and before he was formed. And remember, God knows us and every part of our bodies, even before we are fully formed in the body. You read that from, uh, um, we read that from, uh, from Psalms 139, verse 16. It says, Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet was none of them. Meaning, before there was any kind of formation of you, the mind, the, the brain, the eyes, the, God knew each and every part and it was written in the book. So make no mistake about the, you know, it's like, you, they are not, they're nothing like just a thing in your body. Like some people sometimes do abortion and they call it a thing. It's not like I got rid of it. No, you got rid of a human being that is fully formed in the eyes of God. He sees that. Whatever has not necessarily been formed fully, God sees it as a human being. So respect when you actually conceive. And I want to encourage you women and men around the globe. Once you conceive, from the moment you conceive, that body is actually marked by God and their parts are known in heaven. So don't ever think like you just thrown out a thing. No, you are killing a body, a human being, and you are responsible for that. And I don't want you to feel guilty if you've been doing that and you made it a habit, just throwing out stuff and you think it's just throwing out stuff. No, you are actually getting rid of human beings. You are getting rid of the God's creation. So you need to respect that from this day on. So you know that even you right now, God has a reason. He has a reason for you that now that you are born and now you are living and now you exist, the things that are going to help you to express yourself in the right way is when you have a relationship with our Father. So in a way, we want to look at the fact that if, we are for, if, he, if God knew us before we were formed, it means that we are going to be very careful because we are a divine being. We are divine creator. I mean creation. So that God knows about us. God knows about us. He knows about those people that he has created. You have a divine identity in him. He saw your end from the beginning. However, nothing comes in place. As I said, it's like nothing comes in place without him knowing. He sees the end from the beginning. He sees where you're going right from the time of your conception. Can you imagine? This is our God. So in a way, I want to encourage you this day uh, with Isaiah, um, one of again, my favorite scriptures in Isaiah 46 verse 10 says, He declares the end from the beginning. Now, if, you, if God knows the end from the beginning, I wonder why anybody will begin to live an independent life. No wonder we struggle in our marriages, we struggle in our businesses, we struggle in our relationships. We actually look to people, we look to governments, we blame governments, we blame leaders. You know, it's all about, you know, once you begin to understand who you are, you will live a more meaningful life. And you will never look at somebody else as being a problem or being the cause of your issues and all that. You know, we play all these games, but you see, God has a good plan in the sense that if you understand your full identity in Him, or if you find the full identity in Him, your life is going to be different. You're not probably going to look at the government as being the solution to your life and your future and your well-being. But you begin to look at what has God done 
in terms of creating you for that reason, which is actually mentioned in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, We are his workmanship, created for good works in Christ Jesus, that were actually prepared beforehand, long time ago, before you were even formed. He knew exactly how you're going to express yourself on earth. And, like, you know, sometimes we don't realize that he did that. And we are supposed to be living in that kind of environment whereby he has already created the right climate for your life, for your soul, for your mind, for your heart. So that you just, you know, you live in praise, you live glorifying him. Because that's what we're meant to be. And you know, sometimes people get married and they're blaming each other. They think the wife is the problem. They think the husband is the problem. Now, today I want you to learn something. If you learn to behave yourself, you realize that you probably have the best husband on earth or you have the best wife on earth. You know, it's like, you know, when you begin to live an independent life, you probably will be looking for who actually will do this for me. Which husband or which wife, my wife, which wife is going, my wife is going to look after me, my husband is going to look after me. And no, we are created for a certain reason. It's like when you have soap on your body. I mean, you use soap to wash your body in a way because that is what it was meant for. But the thing is, we don't do that with human beings. When it comes to human beings, human beings are actually a giving being. They are, we are a giving being whereby we actually serve others. We don't go into marriage, we don't enter into relationship, or we don't express ourselves in the company asking who actually does this, who does what for us. No, it's about what am I meant to be doing for my neighbor. And that's what will bless you. That's how you live a life that is more meaningful, by being a blessing, by realizing you are God's masterpiece, meant for what? And if that purpose is actually realized in your life, through the power of the Holy Spirit, as He engages and as we engage with Him, as He guides us, then we shall be a blessing to that person. Not necessarily seeking that that person will be a blessing to us. No. They have their own personal role to carry out. But if they don't, that shouldn't necessarily actually affect your destiny because God has created you for a very good reason and you should be able to rejoice about that because it's a good plan anyway. So if it's a good plan, he will definitely use you to bless your wife. He will bless you. He will make you a blessing to your husband. He will make you a blessing to your children. He will make you a blessing to your nation. He will make you a blessing to the family. He will make you a blessing to your community. So that you live your independent and, you know, your defined life that was actually made by God. So that you will be able to... You'll be able to, to, to be a blessing to others. And then you don't necessarily have to be looking forward to how what they can do to you because that will bring a lot of disappointments because they may not necessarily behave in the way they were actually meant to be and that's very sad so at the end of the day you have to look at what were you meant to be doing anyway and begin to do it may the lord bless you with this message this uh today as we encourage one another along the way and please I want to make sure that we are growing together in understanding ourselves in the light of God so that at the end of the day we are actually living the life we're meant to live and not necessarily gambling anymore or blaming others for our mishaps or for our misfortunes. It's not supposed to be like that. May the Lord bless you. I love you so much and I'm really desperate to see you grow and I'll grow and we to grow together to glorify God in the name of Jesus. And may the Lord bless you. And touch your heart in this with this message. And please don't forget to subscribe because we're still continuing uh, encouraging one another along the way. And always be around to listen and to hear what God is actually talking to you. Because this year you must discover who you are and what you're meant to be. So you will never gamble or blame anybody else for your misfortune. God loves you and he has a good plan for you. May he bless you today. In Jesus' name. Till then, bye-bye.